Big thanks to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring today's video. So in order to practice my filmmaking skills and explore new techniques, I reached out to a local brand here in San Diego and asked them if they wanted to create a commercial for the shoot that they made. I think it's really important to take on some personal projects from time to time in order to have that creative freedom and control to really just try out new things without having so much pressure and expectations on the line. Projects like these is where you can really get out of your comfort zone and use it as a great learning experience. So without further ado, before I jump into all the behind the scenes and breakdown, crank up the audio and uh, enjoy. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Huge shout out to Tafari, super awesome down to earth, hardworking dudes that really wanted to make this happen just as much as I did. Tyler was the one that was drawing up the designs inside the commercial and Pat was the one that was filming inside the city scenes. They have a similar message of creating to inspire others. So I totally resonated with that and really wanted to work with them on this project. So now jumping straight into it and let's first start off with gear because I know that's a popular topic in the YouTube filmmaking community. So I kept it pretty simple. The main and only camera that I used throughout this entire commercial was just the Sony a7S III. I haven't really been able to break this camera in and really get a good feel for it. So I thought this project was perfect for it. I shot most of the footage in S-Log3 and I gotta say I'm really impressed with the colors that I was able to get out of it. And not only that, also just how easy it was to get a good grade on it. I think the 10-bit 422 codec is a huge improvement from the previous 8-bit codec on previous Sony cameras. I used a couple different lenses throughout this entire project, but I would say the main one that I used was definitely the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. If you're looking for one lens to almost sort of just do it all, then you cannot go wrong with the 24-70, and in hindsight, I probably could have shot this entire project with just that lens. As for my gimbal, I use my trusty Zayun Crane 2. I've had this thing since like 2016, maybe 2017, almost five years now. And that thing is still holding up like a tank. As for lighting, I used the Aperture 300D Mark II, which is by far one of the best lights that I've ever used in my entire life. Nice quality premium lights with great reliability with tons of different settings and effects inside of it. Also used my Nanlite Pavo tubes, which I think is some of the best budget tube lights that you can get. You have full RGB color spectrum as well as warm and cool settings. I've always been a huge fan of tube lighting because it's just so versatile. It's portable. You could use it as a key light. You can use it as a hair light or even practical lights. They just look dope in everything. And the last piece of gear that I want to share with you guys that I use for this project is actually our sponsor for today, NVIDIA Studio. NVIDIA works very closely with hardware manufacturers and software developers like Adobe, Blackmagic, and Red, just to name a few, to create hardware that is compatible with these applications, which enables faster and more efficiency in our editing workflow. Knowing that the hardware inside of my computer is built for performance on all the applications I use, like Premiere Pro, Lightroom, and Photoshop, is super reassuring that I really am getting some of the best performance. Editing this commercial on the Razer Blade 15, which is a NVIDIA Studio laptop, it was a complete breeze. I hardly experienced any lag or hiccups, especially while I was cutting up hundreds of different clips, sound effects, and VFX. And with NVIDIA's video encoding and decoding, I was able to play back at full resolution throughout the entire process, which is pretty impressive and such a pleasure to work with. For me, I find it really hard to stay focused and to get into flow states, especially if my computer and applications constantly keeps freezing every 30 seconds or so. So I think it's really important for my computer to keep up with me and to keep me in my flow state. I think most people forget one of the most important pieces of gear for content creation, and that is having a solid computer to be able to take on all of your video and photo projects. 
And I've said this before, but I think I spend much more time behind my computer than an actual camera. So do not overlook the fact of having a solid computer because you probably will be spending a lot of time sitting in front of it. The Razer Blade 15 is a NVIDIA Studio laptop built with purpose for content creators, featuring vivid color displays, blazing fast memory and storage, and powered by NVIDIA's GeForce RTX GPUs. Take your editing workflow to the next level with NVIDIA Studio. I will leave a link down below in the description for you guys to check out and a huge thanks to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring today's video and just in general for making some awesome tech for us content creators. So now I want to share with you guys the glitch effect that I was able to create with a technique called circuit bending. I've seen a few other filmmakers use this technique and when I first saw it, I thought it was so cool. And uh, this was particularly the technique that I really wanted to experiment with and try out. And also I thought that you guys would really like it too because when I saw it, it blew my mind. It, it, it was really cool. So instead of adding all the glitch effects inside the post processing, I actually used a CRT TV and hooked it up to my laptop and played back some of the footage that I was going to use for the final edit. And I had a circuit bender to basically glitch out and bend uh, the TV to create these unique original analog glitches and textures. So I know this sounds pretty crazy, but just check this out. All right, so let me just quickly show you guys what I've got going on over here. So essentially, I have my laptop actually hooked up to this old CRT TV and it's basically just playing back whatever I'm playing on the laptop. And I had to get one of these little mini adapters to uh, basically to convert these old plugs into a HDMI cord. So uh, that is what that is for. And it's also hooked up to this little device over here, which is the circuit bender. Um, and if I basically play around with the dials and knobs, this will basically distort the image on this old CRT TV. And from here, I just record the screen with my camera and I just start circumbending until I get some good glitches which I then overlay onto my original edit inside the post-processing. Also, I do want to mention that I did create some CRT assets for you guys to easily drag and drop and overlay to get these real analog glitches and textures for your next project. All scanned in 4K resolution and is compatible with all editing softwares like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve. All you have to do is just drag and drop and change the blending mode to use the effect. Digital products is a great way to support us, the creators, and keep the channel running and growing. So a huge thanks to all of you guys who have been supporting me continuously by picking up some of my digital products. If you guys are interested, I will leave a link down below. So now jumping into the first scene and with this overall piece, I wanted to sort of mesh in a urban city lifestyle while also trying to show uh, the art and designer side of Tafari since the shoe is actually a luxury shoe and was inspired by one of their paintings. So for the first scene, we decided to film inside Tyler's home where he would be drawing and designing up the shoes. We hung up some of his super awesome abstract artworks and I decided to light up the scene with some Nanlite Pavo tubes as well as hazing it up a bit to give it some atmosphere. I set one Nanlite Pavo tube to a warm setting and basically kind of just use that as a key light and also using another Nanlite Pavo tube and I set that to a green light and use that more of as a hair light to kind of uh, give some separation and to give some uh, interesting color inside of the scene. And for this scene in particular, there was one shot that I really wanted and that was the top-down shots of Tyler drawing up the shoe just so that I could circuit bend it and match cut it into the next shot which is the hero shot. I think this is one of the best shots that I got of the shoe throughout the entire commercial and if you guys have seen my Adidas spec photo shoot video that I created like a month or two months ago I basically did the exact same setup where I hung up the shoe on a fishing wire and I got rid of it in the post processing to make it appear as though if it were floating and then I also added some Nanlite Pavo tubes in the background as practical lights and then last but not least fogged it up with my fog machine to give it all that smoking texture. If you guys want to see a more in-depth breakdown and process of how I set that up and lit it up, I'll leave a link down below to my Adidas spec photo shoot video that I made a while back, just so I don't have to explain the entire setup inside this video. And for the next scene, we decided to visit some iconic spots in LA. And uh, for this particular scene, I really wanted to focus on more urban lifestyle shots of Pat wearing the shoes. 
I say this probably in almost all my videos, but make sure to location scout before you start your project. A great way to prepare for your shoot and to save a ton of time is to pre-plan as much as you can. So instead of me driving to LA and figuring out all the locations I wanna visit all on the spot and basically just wasting time, do your homework and research some potential locations that would work for your project. So that way, when it comes time for your shoot, you already know all the spots that you wanna hit, where they are and how exactly to get there. And as for the camera work that I kind of wanted to go with for the city scenes was a more organic handheld shaky look. So I added a cage to my a7S 3 and also a top handle, but I kind of relied a little too heavy on the in-body stabilization. I thought that the in-body stabilization on the a7S 3 could kind of take care of all the micro jitters, but a lot of the footage came out super jittery and I ended up having to scrap out a lot. In hindsight, I should have added more weight to my setup. Reason is because when you have a much heavier camera like most traditional cinema cameras, the weight actually helps stabilizes your camera and that's how you get that unique organic handheld look. But with these smaller mirrorless cameras, it's harder to replicate that look because of how light it is and because of all the micro jitters that you get with it. Luckily, I did bring my gimbal with me and I did manage to get some gimbal shots. So uh, I ended up using those inside the final edit. So lesson learned there, just some tips if you wanna get that nice organic handheld look on smaller cameras, make sure to add some weight. So for the next couple of scenes, we decided to shoot the rest of it inside Tyler and Pat's art studio where they had most of their artwork at. We decided to shoot at 9 p.m. just so everyone would clear out and that way we would have the entire art studio to ourselves. Tyler had a really awesome idea of painting a huge Tafari logo on his wall, which I thought was a great way to sort of show that their brand is heavily inspired by art. And for the final shoe unboxing scene, we decided to use a big room on the lower level of the art studio. And I noticed that it was a little blank and plain, so we decided to actually put up some of his artworks in the background as a set design. As for lighting, I placed the Aperture 200D Mark II at a 45 degree angle from the shoebox and pat. And then I also placed a Nanlite Pavo tube and set to a warm setting to kind of his uh, left back area, giving it a uh, side separation light, a hair light to kind of separate him from the background, giving a little bit of dimension. And at this point, I realized that majority of the shots that I'm gonna be using are gonna be gimbal. So I just stuck with my gimbal and try to get more smooth gimbal-like shots for the rest of the scenes. Sometimes you start a project with a certain vision and you know, like probably 50% of the time, it doesn't really come out the way that you envisioned, but that's okay. You need to adapt and basically problem solve to how you can actually figure out a way to complete the project. And that is exactly what I did. I screwed up on the handheld shots. So um, I focused more on the gimbal shots. So that was a gist, that was a gist of sort of how I created this commercial. At the end of the day, I learned a lot, got to try out some new techniques and also had a lot of fun. And that's what it's all about. Even if it is a free project, just creating for the sake of creating and improving, these are all steps in you know getting you closer to your final goal. I hope this video inspires you in one way or another to maybe just get out there with some friends and just create something. So I know there was a lot that I covered and also a lot that I did not cover. So if you guys have any questions, any questions at all, if it's about the gear, the circuit bending or scouting locations or pre-planning, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try to reply to every single one of you guys. And again, huge thanks to Tafari for helping me out with this video, making the entire process so much fun. So make sure to check out their website down below in the description if you guys are interested in any of their shoes or products. And a big thanks to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check them out, link in the description. Also, make sure to check out my CRT Assets Pack if you guys are interested in that as well. A free way to support the channel is just by dropping a like on this video. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Do not forget to subscribe if you did enjoy this video or want to see more content like this. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Light up.